This technology is different, it's new, it's revolutionary. This has never been done. There's so many firsts on this particular job. It can potentially change how we repurpose old oil and gas wells and turn them into valuable renewable energy resources. A technology like this allows it to be scaled at many different places around the world. It is the first milestone in what we see to be a geothermal revolution. And that's the fascinating bit about this, actually. I find that geothermal is truly renewable. This site here in Yorkshire is the world's first commercial scale demonstration of a former gas production site that has been turned into a site to produce clean geothermal energy. But it's not been a simple journey. Shall I start from the beginning? So, 2016-17, they proposed they were going to come and frack in my local area. There's about 200 people in, in this part of the village. We just lost a campaign, a community campaign, against the planning application to, to frack at Kirby Mispleton. There was 4,000 signatures opposing fracking and 26 four. So usually when you put that into a planning sort of application, you would expect that the community would be listened to. The application is granted. It wasn't part of our retirement plan to find ourselves engaged in, in campaigning against fracking. We hadn't heard about it, didn't know what it was. They were shocked and they were horrified that, that this could be coming and they, they, they said, well, the next step is we have to go and protest. We have to go and stop these on the ground. Anti-fracking campaigners from across the country who'd gathered outside County Hall in North Yorkshire in the hope of seeing permission for a new site refused. But councillors in Northallerton voted in favour, leaving the protesters plotting political revenge. Third Energy intends to frack an existing well, KM8, to establish whether gas can be commercially extracted. Kirby Misperton is being used as a sacrifice. Having our countryside trashed is something I, 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 I can't describe, the visceral sadness of it all. Three people were arrested during yesterday's protest. All have been released, two have accepted cautions. The, the protesting was substantial. People came here from all over to support us and there was a lot of pressure on local government, um, our MP, but local media and national media got involved. It was definitely the most controversial thing I had to deal with in, in my parliamentary career, certainly in the constituency. Little old ladies were literally standing there. These big burly policemen were six foot five, and I, they generally didn't know what to do. It was the protest that was holding up the companies. It allowed us to run election campaigns in the three general elections to build a movement, a political movement against the actual policy of going out to frack for fossil fuels in the UK. We targeted Parliament. That's when we saw the government really in 2019. I think they just so is this a fight we don't really want to get into anymore? And that's when the moratorium came in place. Today I'm announcing that the government is putting a moratorium on any further shale gas exploration um, for the foreseeable future. The ban on fracking started in November 2019. I met Russell in February 2020 and we, we kind of just thought, well, we need to move third energy away from fossil fuels. This was a pivotal moment. Third Energy turned its back on fossil fuels and embraced the potential of geothermal. Towards the end of 2019, I first met with Seraphie just to convince ourselves that, that this wasn't a crazy idea, that, that, that we could use that hot water. You can tell from the accent, I'm not from North Yorkshire. So this new guy turns up and says, don't worry, no more fracking, we're going to do renewables. You have to deliver on that, you have to follow up. On this particular site, we're looking at probably a megawatt and a half to two megawatts of thermal energy. That's enough to run potentially about 300 homes. You take somewhere like the United States in Texas, where they've got 1.6 million wells in the state of Texas alone, that's the order of magnitude that we're talking about. Well repurposing has clear advantages for the oil and gas industry. It helps fossil fuel producers take advantage of an asset that would otherwise be a liability on their balance sheet by converting it into useful economic production. 
It's much lower risk and lower cost than creating a geothermal well from scratch. And perhaps most importantly, it can help the industry reach net zero carbon emissions. So if you start this journey in 2020, a team of guys got together with an idea and now we've got some 30 people working for the company, consultants and advisors operating in different countries. And we've not just got people who want to come to work from nine to five, we've got people who want to come to work because they want to deliver a mission. The culmination of three years with a very hard work, a dedicated team contributing to this, but we're here, it's fantastic. In March 2023, Serafi Energy was awarded a match-funded grant from the Net Zero Technology Centre, a UK government technology accelerator platform designed to support innovation and technology. The Serafi well works through conduction. It takes heat that is present at the bottom of the well to the surface, where it is processed for its required energy use. The Serafi well system uses a pipe of two inch high density polyethylene or HDPE to increase integrity and allow the fitting of centralizers and other technical components. Over 160 12 meter sections were welded together on site by the Serafi team, reaching a total depth of 2000 meters and using a custom designed scaffold and injector system. HDPE pipe usually has a low temperature threshold. However, the Serafi team has broken records installing the system to 2000 meters and to the maximum designed operating temperature of 90 degrees Celsius. Once the desired depth of pipe installation was achieved, the wellhead was installed and the interconnecting surface pipework was connected to the Serafi True unit, another proprietary Serafi design. The Serafi True unit will operate for a number of weeks, capturing real-time data used to further refine and adapt the performance of the Serafi well system design. Serafi has been working with industry experts to ensure accurate measurements of the data that's been collected. By using their domain expertise, digital technologies, sensors, controls, fiber optic systems, and the analysis of the data in order to ensure that the production of geothermal heat is reliable, economic, predictable, and safe. At the initial stages, you need government involvement, you need some subsidies, some, some grant funding to get that off the ground. Okay. I'm really delighted at Serafi's investment here and Third Energy, and uh, I'm delighted that the government supported it. This kind of innovation will definitely be part of the solution for the future. And we know one of the toughest things to decarbonise will be heating in people's homes and commercial buildings. But here's the solution. 6 weeks ago this site was just a bare oil and gas well in machine we only started this morning but we're already at enough energy coming out of the well to power around 50 homes and it's great to see you know visitors now coming to the site to be able to share this experience with us and actually see you know what what this is about it's been fantastic to see uh, this project come to life. It's been a long time in the making. We've done lots of study work on geothermal, but to see a physical demonstrator is a really exciting time. It's so exciting to, to see the unit working. It sounds silly to have a, a mock radiator set up, but it, it does make a difference. When you can see the well, you know that the water is coming out of the well, and then you can touch the radiator and feel it warm. It's, it's brilliant. So it's quiet here, all the tests have finished. You've got the results, you've got yep. the data. What did you find? Well, we run the test really for about four weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, the first test we did for about a week was just to extrapolate and take out as much heat as we could for the well to understand what temperatures, the maximum temperatures we were getting. We had a 30 degree delta, so we were 70 degrees at the bottom and getting just around 42 degrees at the top. And then the second and third week, we ran the system for various different uh, stages. So we, we ran it for a period of time, injecting cooler temperatures to see what the balance of that was from the thermal extraction to be able to increase that temperature to the surface. And, and we were started, you able to? Were you able yeah, to get we the were, higher temperatures Yeah, and also what that, what that simulates is the draw of properties and draw of heat from the system. At the moment, most of us are heating our homes we're heating our hot water by burning fossil fuels at really, really high temperatures, much higher than we need. But nevertheless, we do have access to hot water whenever we need it. Mm -hmm. Are we going to still be able to get 
warm enough homes and hot water when we need it by just tapping into whatever temperature we get from under the ground. Yeah, at this low temperature here, you know, the ironic thing is we're burning gas at 1000 degrees plus to get 60 degrees. Here, we're actually taking a 20 degrees temperature through a heat exchange process. And you have two sides of it. So you have a low, a low temperature side, which is changing temperature from around 20 to 40 degrees for your radiators, obviously. And then you have a higher temperature side, taking it from 40 to 60, which is for your hot water. Well, just this one section of pipe, yeah. because it's taken the, the heat and the fluid through the system, it's only, obviously, it's not representing a big loop going around, say, like a new development. It's only representing 20 odd mm -hmm. meters of, of, the, of the pipe loop. But that's actually demonstrating that that 20 meters is sufficient energy to produce energy enough for 22 homes. So if this was three or 400 metres long going through a, a distributed network through a house and estate or something, this particular system could run 300 homes quite easily. 300 homes, that's incredible. Are we talking about some enormous big construction on the side of your house? No, not at all. I mean, the energy centres we're talking about on these larger developments are no bigger than a sort of large container or a double garage in a property, and they would be sufficient enough to run at least 300 homes from that. And then, the, you know, the connection to the property would just come in with a hot water line which would connect to your heat pumps and that would be fed literally on tap all the time. So you haven't got to heat it up or get it hot, it's there all the time. How big is that? Is, is, that are we is talking about that tiny little yeah. box there? Yeah, that is the heat pump. Of course, you know, the temperature of the entire planet is going up. We're going to need cooling just as much as heating. Mm. Can this do that? Yeah, well, that's the great thing. I mean, what we do in the summer is we reverse the process round and we chill the water down effectively at the same process and you're putting cooler water into the system, specifically for new properties where they're designed where you've got underfloor heating or larger buildings. A uh, typical example is a hospital we're looking at where they want to put underfloor heating everywhere, but at the same time in the summer they can actually chill the hospital down and cool it down with the, like, reversing the process. Are you looking to drill your own holes that yeah, are not absolutely. repurposing an old oil or gas well. Yeah, we've already started. Yeah, we've already started. And we've started obviously shallow, but we intend to go deeper and deeper and deeper as we do this. And we have to sort of gain public confidence and public engagement to do that. But at the end of the day, there's far more volume of energy in a deeper well uh, using our system as opposed to the conventional way of using sort of ground source heat pumps, which are loops in the ground. So essentially you're looking at big residential complexes. Our vision is really looking at what we call anchor loads, so large infrastructure, hospitals, university campuses, business park, enough energy in these locations for them to become sort of anchor loads to then add more to for then domestic and residential users. Now this is just a test case that has proved successful, but how long are we looking at seeing this rolled out much more widespread, scaled up? We're looking for investment, we're looking for engagement with other sort of uh, innovative, um, should I say, collaborators who, who see the potential and want to scale. Oh, it's, it's really exciting. I mean, I can't wait for geothermal to go mainstream. For the residents of Kirby Misperton, this has been a long time coming. The fact that Seraphie want the involvement of local community, I think that builds confidence. Seraphy have in a sense come to us and said, let's build the trust. We're met with warm and open arms now once you understand you know, what it is, what we're doing, um, and the benefit it's going to bring to, to the community. I feel great being involved in this. Um, you know, it's something that's close to my heart. Um, renewable energy, um, green energy, um, and having a sustainable planet for my children's future um, is, is something that matters to me. If we can just do it here, and we can do it again and again and again and again. It's just ethically right. It's right for our future, it's right for our children, it's, it's right for the planet. Seraphy are on a mission. They, they just feel like they're on a mission. And like that, it's, it's good because it's going to need someone who's on a mission to do this. The potential is absolutely massive and it's endless because, you know, it's, a, it's an export value for the UK that can take not just what we are achieving on the journey, but also drag through and pull through other companies that are in the energy space, oil and gas space, etc., to come on that journey with us. Our pitch is saving the planet one megawatt at a time and people buy into that pitch. People feel that they are part of that mission and hopefully when, you know, we move forward, that mission is staying on as a legacy <laughs> moving forward for many generations to come. In this small corner of Yorkshire, Seraphy have shown what a successful transition to clean energy could look like. And even more remarkably, they've done it with the support of the local community. Now that's a lesson that the whole world can learn from. <laughs>